Next talk is by uh, Dr. Mohammad Shabazz. He will talk on tackling the unwanted guest, the vitreous. Good afternoon, all. I'd like to thank Dr. Sandhya for giving this talk to me. And uh, I think most of the part is covered by Dr. Sony itself. <laughs> so I will just show you the videos. I'll skip first two, three slides. So these are just the indication what of precaution you have to take. So we'll directly go to the videos. Now it's in continuation with Dr. Sony. So this video is, uh, is about like how to go about and do. So this uh, it's very well it was going on like uh, and uh, as usual they are doing four quadrant technique and beautifully divided. This was done by my PG. And uh, once you come to this stage, you see there is a rain thinness. So at this stage, I have to intervene then because uh, vitrectomy we have to do. Now as you have to increase, maximum cut rate should be there, whatever cut rate you have initially. Because if your cut rate is low, it will drag the vitreous and it will cause inflammation in. So maximum cut rate. And once you are thorough, you have thorough with vitrectomy, you can come back to IA cut. In IA cut means the aspiration will be first, the cut will be second. So this will help you to aspirate the cortex. So now I am in IA cut. I can just aspirate the cortex, bring, and then I give a cut. So you can remove the cortex in this way. And then because this was a SACS, so we implanted the lens in the sulcus. And this closed it. Now coming to the second case here, she has done the red, pupil is small, and then she has called me. So, and the large trigem is also there, so I remove the trigem and I put a additional port. This is easily available in our OT nowadays, and it do helps in, because these cases you cannot afford to have viscot. So when you are using visco, visco will cause intractable glaucoma, which because if it goes backside, next stage or IP will be high and you cannot do anything, you have to do three port vitrectomy. So if you put this port, the fluid will not allow visco to go and set in. So same thing I am showing in this also, now vitrectomy I have done and then I am removing cortex with the cutter itself. So, so initial vitrectomy has to be very thorough. You have to be, uh, in this we are showing very less, but you have to be very thoroughly and you have to be very sure about that that you have removed all the vitreous from there. So to check, you can use triamcelon at the end. So if you put triamcelon, all the strand, vitreous strand will be visible to you. So now this again, this is a three piece lens. I will go to the next video. Now this is where she has done, completed, put the lens. Now one week we have, I have seen the post op. Now we can see here, this is pupil is updrawn. That means here the vitreous is incarcerated into the section. So now if this case remains, you will have multiple complications like vitreous big, big syndrome, you can have RD also. So you have to remove this vitreous and make the pupil round. So how to go about, like first thing is that I have dilated the pupil because pupil was non-dilated and then you use a spatula to bring the vitreous in the center. So see the fi vitreous fibers are coming in and then you do a thorough vitrectomy. So, and then you can go back under the lens, do a thorough vitrectomy. And after doing thorough vitrectomy, then you can revert back to IA mode and then you can aspirate the cortex. So, so now I'm using triamcelone in this, so to check whether any vitreous is strand is there in this section. And at the end, you can use pilocarpine. If you are, have a doubt or if you feel, you can use a spatula, swap over the in iris plane. So this is like already present vitreous. So, so first thing, because if vitreous is there in antechamber, you cannot do anything. So first thing you have to do is to remove the vitreous. Because vitreous will not allow to do rexis, it will not allow to do any other procedure. Every time vitreous will be coming in your probe. So you do a vitrectomy and how good vitrectomy you do, there will be some part of vitreous strand in the section or in the side ports. 
so you have to be careful and remove that strand see this is what i am doing and you can see that some strand will be there you can bring it in the center now we can go about your cataract surgery finish it off the subluxated cataract another case is like this like you, you it's very difficult to recognize which side vitreous is anybody can guess so the larger side is this side is vitreous because the zonal dialysis is in this side so again in this i have used time slow and first because i was also very much confused because that line was making a demarcation line so now you have to do again the vitrectomy And here at the end, you can see there are some vitreous fibers which are incarcerated in your side ports. So it do happens in most of the times. So you have to use a spatula, bring it in the center. So you can do additional vitrectomy. Now this is another case in which the lens is dangling. Now it was a challenge for me for my VR surgeon, sir. I am there. If you can do, put the lens in the bag. I told if I am taking the case, I will do that. So, so what are the challenge you will have? First is the vitreous, it is full of vitreous, lens is dangling. So first thing is to bring the lens up. So for that, I have used a trocar with an irrigation fluid. Now if you put that, the fluid will push the lens up. Now it has come into patellar fossa. Now you do the vitrectomy. So vitrectomy has to thorough up to like mid vitreous cavity. So Again, as I told you, on the side ports, it will come. Some vitreous fiber will definitely come in the side port. So now I'm going behind the lens and I'm doing the vitrectomy. You can see these vitreous fibers are still there because of time slow and it is uh, stained. And... Uh, I'm just removing that also because it will keep on coming. Now the very, imp very important question in this case is to do rexis. Rexis you cannot do normal with, so this is like bimanual rexis I do. You make a nick and then with nick you can make with the vitreous scissor or and then you hold one end and with the other, with the other micro forcep you can hold other end. Now this is the important thing which I want to show you. In this now I am going like I was very happy I have done but at this stage you can see what has happened so you have to be very careful when you're using a spatula because all good thing is gone next is the patient this another case like it's a previously operated now if you do not take care of vitus this thing can happen because vitus will come and push the lens away and uh, the heptic is incarcerated in this so first thing you have to remove the lens and bring in the dandy chamber so this usually do not get like, heptic will not get fibros so you can just dial the lens and if it is not dialing you can use your side port or any scissor to cut that fibrotic band now you cannot leave the lens in the sulcus like this even after doing vitrectomy so as we were discussing we can enlarge the posterior fibrotic capsule and we can put the lens and do a optic capture because if you leave in the sulcus it will again dip back so these are the take home assets. Vitus in anterior chamber is not normal. You have to be careful and remove it. A thorough anterior vitrectomy is mandatory to keep vitreous below the iris plane. Do not get panic when you have a PC rent. It is a part of your surgery. Identify the rent and vitreous. Two port vitrectomy is good. If you put additional port, it do help in reducing the visco going in the posterior segment. Use pyrocarpine, triamcelone and a spatula to make sure that vitreous has gone back to the uh, below the iris plane and close the section, preferably with suture. This is another case, if uh, this is just 30 seconds, like zonal dialysis as she has already shown. So Spence. I think uh, we can just put a CTR and close it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mohammed Shavas. Next, we'll have a very short and brief 